Hi, good people. I'm sure you're very well. It is that day. <laughs> we did not say just that day. <laughs> we said it is my day. <laughs> the 13th of November. Once upon a time, my day. Once upon a time, my day. <laughs> And our today's once upon a time my day is about the dangerous forest. The dangerous forest. Once upon a time there lived a fine gentleman by the name Ramu. Ramu was a married man and he lived not very far from some forest. One day, he lost his wife due to an unknown disease. The death of Ramu's wife threw him into darkness. And after his wife died, Ramu was left alone in this world because his only son used to live far away and didn't even come for his mother's last rites. Ramu, Ramu's age was 65 and losing his life, I mean, and losing his wife and seeing his son behavior, he felt as if there was nothing left for him. With time, Ramu, Ramu's sadness increased. The wife is dead and the son is prodigal. He had become a social misfit. The pain was that he was not only bad, but he didn't even get time or even see the need to come and bury his mother. The more Ramu thought about his situation, the stronger his belief became that it was useless to live in this world anymore. One morning, one morning, he went out for a walk and didn't return to his home. His steps took him out of the city and there he saw a bus. He took that bus and after a few hours, the bus was passing through a dense forest and stops there for a break. When the bus stopped for a break, Ramu stepped out and headed in a direction. After a while, he heard the sound of horn from the bus calling for passengers to return, but he decided not to return. He wanted to get lost in the forest. In fact, he wanted to die. He wanted to end his useless life, as he called it. In the dense forest, even during the day, there was slight darkness. Ramu was walking as if he was not conscious. Con conscious. Due to heat, he started feeling thirsty. While walking, he went towards a high ledge. His steps suddenly stopped. 
there was a place at the point where he stopped. There was a slope and the slope opened towards a valley below. There he saw that the path was blocked by two sticks. There it was written in big letters, Danger. Ramu looked and there found no one. He couldn't understand that who would have written that in such a dense forest. While he was looking around, he peeked a little farther towards the valley. Seeing deep ditch ahead, his heart trembled. He sat aside, thinking how some moment ago he wanted to die, but now he was scared, scared stiff. After a while, he got up due to thirst. But where could water be found in such a dense forest, he thought. Just then, he saw that there was a little pond made of stone was filled with water. Some fruits were also kept there. He stood there thinking, if he should drink that water. He was thirsty. So he drank that water and ate the fruits that were kept there. He didn't want to know to whom they belonged. Now, with a calmed mind, he thought, eh, who has done this? In such a dense forest, someone prepares fruits and some water to drink. He started wondering, looking for the person who had done that. While wondering, he saw many signs. He saw danger sign. He saw beware signs at many, many dangerous places. And poisonous fruits sign was also written on many, many trees. He realized that if those signs were not put up, anyone, anyone could have fallen in those deep ditch and lost his life. Now <laughs> he is thinking of good things but he had gone to the forest to die. Seeing all this, Ramu called out loudly, Brother, who saved my life? I want to see you. Just then, from behind the leaves, an old man appeared laughing and said, Ha, ha, ha. I have been watching you for a long time. Tell me, how did you come here? To tell you the truth, I had come with intention for ending my life, but that sign changed my mind, replied Ramu. When asked by the old man, Ramu narrated his whole story. The death of the wife, the son turning prodigal, and the hopelessness thereafter. After telling his story, he asked the old man, Who are you? And what are you doing here? The old man replied, My name is Nasi. Many years ago, while passing through this forest, my only son 
fell into a deep pit hidden under the grass. He fell so deep that even I couldn't reach there. He lost his life. After I lost him, my world went blank and dark. My wife had already died. There was nothing left in my life. Thinking this, I decided that I would also end my life by jumping in the same pit in which my son fell. Nasi father said, I was going to jump and suddenly my mind said, Oh no, this is cowardice. It is possible that your son fell. But you see, many people can lose their life while passing through this forest. Then I realized that some arrangement should be made so that no other life was harmed or even lost this way. That time, I placed three branches around that pit and tied them with the vines and placed a sign there. Ramu asked, Then? Then I thought, There must be more such dangerous places in this forest. I saw that there were many other similar pits. Seeing them, I decided that as long as there is even a single dangerous place hidden in this forest, I will not die. Since then, I am living in this forest. My work is not finished yet. I am not kidding myself. I have written warnings at many dangerous places and learned about edible fruits. This forest is not as dangerous as it was before. In fact, it is my lovely home. I have shown way to many lost people, provided food and water to those who were on the verge of dying because of hunger and thirst. Every time I am able to help someone, I feel that my decision to not die was so right, said the old man. It got lit, so the old man invited Ramu to his place so that he can go back the next day. So the next morning, when Ramu woke up, the old man said, Let me show you that path to go out of this forest. Listening to this, Ramu refused to leave, saying, I am not leaving. I am staying here with you. As you said, there are still many places in this forest that needs care. I had given up the intention of dying. I have learned that by staying alive, I can help others and save others from dying. The old man smiled and accepted his decision. <laughs> Ramu did not die. And my dear friend, even you, you will not die. I don't know what you are going through, but I want to tell you, from Ramu's experience, there is a lot that you can do. Whatever that is bogging you down, work on it. Your work is not yet done. There is a lot that you can do to prevent many others going the path that you want to go. The situation is so bad, but what are you doing about it? Killing yourself is not a solution. In fact, killing yourself is complicating that which is already complicated. Do not die. Let us live and make this world a better place for all of us. God bless and good my old day, my good day, and my day. God bless. In the name of the Father and of the Son, <clears throat> End of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friend, I'm sure you're very well. It is Monday, 
the 13th day of November in the year of our Lord and Savior 2023. Today we are on day 16 in our novena for candidates. And today our sons and daughters from 8 to 10.30 they will be doing mathematics and in the afternoon, 2 to 4.30, they will do Kiswahili Fasihi. So, leo ni mahesabu na Kiswahili Fasihi. Mathematics and Kiswahili Fasihi. So, we continue to pray for our children. Our gospel passage is taken from Luke 17. Verses 1 to 6. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. And he said to his disciples, Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to him by whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung round his neck and he were cast into the sea, than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. Take heed to yourself. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this sycamore tree, Be rooted up and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. The Gospel of our Lord. In today's gospel passage, Jesus gives us two warnings. One, we should not give scandal to anyone. Number two, we need to practice unconditional forgiveness. Jesus also stresses our need for trusting faith in God's power if we are to avoid giving scandal and to practice offering forgiveness. The great sin of scandal, as we have uh, read, scandal is a trap or stumbling block. The catechism defines it as anything, action, or omission which causes an occasion of sin for another. Giving scandal to children and beginners in the faith is a serious sin because it causes a chain reaction of sins for years, affecting many, taking away the life of grace from the victims. That is why Jesus says that it would be better for its perpetrators to have their necks inserted in heavy circular millstones and to be drowned in the sea than to suffer God's punishment for this sin. The necessity of practicing forgiveness, it is quite important. Jesus commands his followers to forgive their 
offending brothers and sisters repeatedly as often as they are repentant father we need to offer fraternal correction to the offender with charity without humiliating him or offending his feelings at the same time we should not allow the offender to violate our just rights sincere forgiveness leads to forget the particular offense and the ex and the extend and to extend the hand of friendship which in turn helps the offender to repent jesus concludes his instructions by reminding his followers that avoiding scandals and forgiving the offenders are possible only if they have the trusting faith in god which enables him to work miracles in their lives on this we need to avoid giving scandal to anyone because it causes serious sins and does damage to an innocent victim we should ask god to enlarge our hearts to forgive others and to help us be ready to grant forgiveness to those who have offended us we need to be more accommodating given that not everybody will look at life from our own perspective and of course knowing that we cannot be able to control what other people can say or think but we can control how we feel after we have heard whatever could have been said and by the way that is where forgiveness comes in god bless you